What's up, guys? Our current focus on the poetry revision is cliches. We're looking for cliches in our writing and trying to cut them or switch them out for something better to say what we want to say in a new way and not in a way that our readers have heard a million times. And twice recently, in two different people's work, I saw this phrase, dark and stormy night. And I highlighted it and said, oh, it's a cliche. You might want to change that. But I never had checked before where that came from. It didn't stick out to me as something I knew, except something I'd heard repeated a million times in cartoons or whatever. So I decided to check and I thought it was kind of interesting. First of all, we see something different. It was a dark and stormy night is an often mocked and parodied phrase considered to represent some bad writing. And that's different because usually with cliches, they're acknowledged as good we think, oh yeah, that was a good idea, or that was a good bit of wordplay. And it only became bad through overuse, through going stale. But this one got some bad reviews right away and may have become known for being bad. It's almost like um, a reminder that a meme, a thing that spreads between people culturally is only successful because it spreads. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be bad. It could be any type of uh, interesting, catchy, uh, viral quality that may or may not be good writing in a literary way. Um, the origin of this comes from a novel in 1830 by Edward Bulwer Lytton, handsome guy, which honestly doesn't sound that bad to me. The sentence it was a dark and stormy night. The rain fell in torrents, except at occasional intervals when it was checked by a violent gust of wind which swept up the streets, for it is in London that our scene lies, rattling along the housetops and fiercely agitating the scanty flame of the lamps that struggled against the darkness. Like I said, that doesn't seem that bad to me. I get the sort of overdramatic quality, and it's a long sentence with some predictable stuff. But if I saw that, I wouldn't think, well, that's going to be famous 200 years later for being so awful. I think, and I haven't read much about this beyond the wiki page, but I think that it was a style that was overdone at the time. And so people were saying, oh, great, another one of these gothic stories with some dark houses and lightning in the background. And guess what? The darkness represents, you know, humanity's greed and it's going to come in when we're when we're shut up in this uh you know harsh elemental assault by the rain and i can imagine you're like oh yeah it's another one of those now this sentence has become famous as something you might use as a joke but the writer wasn't using it as a joke. And in fact, this guy came up with some other phrases that are still around today. The pen is mightier than the sword. I've heard that, I've said that. Good old Edward bulwer Lytton right there. The great unwashed, you guys may not have heard that because it was more popular uh, decades ago, but it's a way to refer to like, you know, the peasants, the um, low class majority of a country. And the almighty dollar, although that one has a little bit of controversy over who said it first, Still, he's got a claim to being a, a candidate as the coiner. Now, where I heard this, and when I was scrolling down the wiki page, I immediately said, oh, yeah. Where I've heard this is in Peanuts. Snoopy would sit on top of his little doghouse with his little typewriter, and it would show what he was writing. And usually it would start with, it was a dark and stormy night. And if I remember, the next line was usually, suddenly a shot rang out to give you that sense of like, ooh, mystery, somebody's got a murder going on and we're gonna have to solve it, uh, Scooby-Doo style. Now, I've also heard that in this book, A Wrinkle in Time, I didn't realize it when I was looking at people's poems, but this is the beginning of that book too, and it's not meant to be a huge joke. It's meant to be like having fun with the line, but not making fun of the line. And that was a nice little fun thing, and when I, scrolled down across this, I thought, oh yeah, that's kind of a fun thing to do. Now it's been in songs and other things as well. The um, important thing to remember is that cliches are 
usually older than you think, and they're usually like more widespread than you think. So if this has been around for a while and the whole point of the thing is that it's been popular, it's been sort of saturated into different times and places is that other people have had fun with it. And so other people have used it in their poems and songs and books. Now that means we can too, but it takes a lot of effort. And so if you're just gonna say it was a dark and stormy night to mean that it was night, which was dark and also stormy, then you bring in all those associations and the reader's gonna go, wait, haven't I heard that before? And didn't that appear over Snoopy's head when he was typing? And usually that's not what you want. It could be, but usually if you wanna say, hey, there's some lightning and there's a storm and I don't wanna go out and the mood is a bit scary, then you can say that in other ways. And that's the point of this lesson.